And welcome back, everyone. All right. So we're on Act Two. This is a uh, Tucker. No. Oh no! Tucker, oh, it's Tucker. the hacker. Tucker Foley. <laughs> wait a minute. Tucker was beginning to wait. What? Is that the inspiration for the character? <laughs> I hope not. No. Tucker was beginning to wonder if Abby wasn't into him anymore. Man, great. Uh, what prompted that? Great story. Ever since he tried to help her find out what happened to Wendy, she had been acting strange. Probably because her best friend's missing. You fool. They barely hung out anymore. You fool. And she was returning his calls and messages less and less. At school, she was elusive. At home, she was intrusive. <laughs> <laughs> At school, she was elusive. And it seemed like she wasn't concerned about his, her appearance anymore. At school, she was elusive. At home, she was elusive, the rapper. <laughs> she had always been a tomboy, Step preferring to wear jeans and t-shirts over skirts and high heels. I wear t-shirts... Isn't that the Taylor Swift song? I think yeah. so. She wears high heels, I wear t-shirts. She's cheer captain and I'm on the bleachers. I think oh, it's right. sneakers, but yeah. That's probably true. But who doesn't wear sneakers? The Taylor Swift song. But there was some, uh, the end. But there was right. something different now. Now her outfits look thrown together instead of having some sort of cohesion. Some artistic is cohesion. He, is this man really <coughs> criticizing a girl's appearance right and now? And her hair. It was like she hadn't combed in months. It wasn't like he really cared how he, she looked. Seems like it's all you care about. But I did just spend a paragraph <laughs> critiquing how she but looked. But I didn't do it. <laughs> but I he, did this. But he knew that something terrible must have happened. Did it have something to do with, with Wendy? Yes. Yes. But worse than all of that, she was always acting like someone was following her. Once, when he went over to her house to hang out, she insisted that they close all of the curtains and double-check the locks on every single window and door. And I found it really strange when she said someone is, <laughs> someone is following me. That's like a... Like that's like that's like less of something that you should be like worried about how they look and more like, hey, you good? Like mm -hmm. that, that's like a warning sign of like the beginning of a mental illness. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. He had suggested watching a movie, what but movie? when he put it on, she was watching everything but. What movie? She was watching everything but. <laughs> oh, okay. His butt. Ever. <laughs> gonna put on a Abby, great film. Abby kept glancing back and forth between the TV and the hallway. Between the TV and, and the, the hallway. hallway. And like the someone TV would be walking through the hallway. Through the the hallway. <laughs> and the hallway. There at any moment. What? Mm. Uh, not to mention that she jumped at every sound. <laughs> every single sound. Every single sound. Every sound. Like, he breathes. <laughs> Better hope the movie's not like Baby Driver or yeah. something. <laughs> every sound. <clears throat> and her mind seemed elsewhere. When she would look at him, he felt like she was looking right through him. I'm looking. Yeah, like the Beatles song. <laughs> if she was in some kind of trouble, he needed to know. He hated feeling like he couldn't protect her. And after all, he was a nice guy. No, <laughs> after all, there was still a killer at large. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why she's nervous, you <laughs> And you knew the killer. Granted, Jeff might right? be long gone if he knew what was good for him. Yeah, he knows. But what do you mean if he knew what was good for him? What's good for Jeff? He doesn't care. How do you know? People. Still, Wendy was missing, and Jeff may have had something to do with it. We know. Yeah. Tucker decided to stop by her house after school to confront her about what was going on. It had been three we weeks since she since he hacked into Wendy's computer for her. <laughs> Hacker. And since then, he has heard no more talk about finding her. So he hacked into the FBI. No more. <laughs> <laughs> As Tucker was about to leave his house for Abby's, he heard the phone ring. He considered ignoring it, but then he remembered that his parents were out for a date night. Cool. What does that have to do with you answering the phone? He dashed into the kitchen and picked it up on the fourth ring. Hello? H Hello, Tucker? Abby. I don't know why I changed the voice. Abby. <laughs> Abby. I'll change the voice. You? I'll change my voice too. I was just about to uh, come over. No, uh, don't come over. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Dude, uh, two uh, Jeff Goldblum's uh, talking uh, at each other. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, why not? You've been, uh, uh, you've been, ah, uh, ah, uh, acting uh, oh, so weird lately. Are we, uh, are we even still together? There was, was a pause. pause. Nah. And he heard her take a deep breath. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, I'm really, I'm really sorry, Tuck. I just, ah, I, 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 I made a mistake. What mistake? Tucker asked. It doesn't matter. Desperate. I just wanted to let you. I wish know. I could see. I wish. I wish you guys could see Eric's face right now. Eric looks like <laughs> completely absorbed. Right now. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I love you, and also thank you for everything. I love you too. But what's going on, Abby? This is about Wendy. Have you found her? Is she coming back? There was another pause. You just sang that to the to the and fucking then, beat of Smooth Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> I she's don't think she's ever coming back. Da, da, do, 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 
Abby, are you okay? Abby, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Abby, are you okay? <laughs> there was another pause, and then... What? No, that's you. No, that's you. No, it's you. I don't think she's ever coming back. Oh, right. <laughs> now I already read that. Oh. What? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> no matter what happens, Doc, no matter what, don't come looking for me. Don't ask questions. I want you to keep on living and have a good life. <laughs> don't talk what to me. What are you talking me. about? What are you doing? <laughs> Where are you going? Abby. Goodbye, Tucker. I love you. Abby, wait. Okay. And she waited. <laughs> <laughs> And waited. <laughs> waited. But she had already hung up. Tucker slowly put the phone back on the receiver and slumped against the wall, just like... Poof. He felt like such a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> he broke that wall like a Kyle. <laughs> he immediately punched a hole in the wall. <laughs> he couldn't be sure. Maybe his mind was playing tricks on him. Right before Abby hung up the phone, he thought he had heard an ominous male voice chuckling in the background. <laughs> It was an insult. Another prisoner <laughs> joke. You know, out of con out of the context of Jeff, that's a really bad phone call to get from your girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, I've made a mistake, and it ends with a really low, deep, <laughs> chuckling male voice. <laughs> you can you like put in like the Bowser laugh from Hotel Mario? <laughs> <laughs> Just like <laughs> right before yeah. Abby hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> No Tucker walked. wasted no time <laughs> jumping into his 1999 <laughs> Chevy Silverado, thank you, 150,000 miles on its 15th inspection, no, <laughs> and speeding over to Abby's place. He got a park. He got four parking tickets on the way there. Parking, parking tickets. <laughs> How many times did he park? <laughs> he stopped at 7-Eleven to grab some. Um, I don't know, jewel pods. Snapple like. Fun Fact 1999. Snapple Fun Fact. If you have a 1999 Chevy Silverado, you are Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> you that's are. only gonna make that's only gonna make sense when you release the unedited version. You're right. <laughs> Snapple fun fact. So when he got there and banged on the door, <laughs> he was surprised when no one answered. Tucker looked this these episodes are also getting louder. Tucker <laughs> looked through the window and next to the door, but the house was completely dark. Doc. He called out to her, but still there was no Where answer. Doc. Beware of darkness. He ran around to the side of the house and even to the back door. So he ran around to the side of the house where there was no door and tried to get in. <laughs> and then he ran to the back door where there was a door, but he couldn't see or hear anything. She was gone. This is very much like the Slender Man movie right now. After waiting almost an hour on her doorstep, Tucker scribbled a note on some mail. Okay. Like mail is an M-I-L. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I heard that. Tucker I scribbled a note on some dude. <laughs> I wasn't, I using wasn't a, making that. Using a, <laughs> using a pen he happened to have in his truck. Great. When he got home, he waited for hours, but she never called him. Finally, he decided to call her and really lay into her. Hello? No, this is someone else. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, Eric, you Eric, you do it. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. Hi, <laughs> this is Tucker. May I speak to Abby? I'm sorry, Tuck. She's in harbor in front. I thought she'd be with you. No, ma'am. I haven't seen her since we talked earlier. Well, that's strange. I wonder where she could be. Tucker paused for a moment. Everyone pauses for a moment <laughs> in this story. Then, man, I don't mean to alarm you, ma'am, but I think you should call the police. Wow, never really chinned up. <laughs> Lots of chins. <laughs> it was it was Wendy all over again. No, it wasn't. Abby had simply vanished. Well, I guess so. Abby had simply vanished, and no one knew why. Some people wondered if she had gone to find Wendy. Others were convinced that her disappearance was linked to the other disappearances happening around town. What do you mean the other disappearances? Was there more than one? Yeah. Wait. Was oh, there yeah. one Wendy, other than Wendy, Wendy? In Wendy's journal, she was talking about other right. Yeah. I thought she looked up disappearances and didn't find any. I guess I just like completely skipped. <laughs> I, there's been a lot. <clears throat> but so a smaller much. percentage, including Tucker, believed that a certain killer was the culprit. I want to know about this percentage. What do you mean other people think that Jeff the Killer's up to this? It's a good Who point. are these other characters? Yeah. And Tucker was determined to find out if suspicions were true. There we go. See, I, I think I know where the story's going. I think there's going to the moral is going to be, I, uh, I won't say anything, because I, obviously I didn't finish reading this, but like, yeah. I, I feel like that the moral is going to be really ham-fisted. Let's see, let's see, let's keep Tucker going. wasn't the only one who wanted answers. Abby's parents were sick with worry, and they exhausted every resource possible in order to find her. They called the police station daily, demanding any news that they had. You gotta feel bad for those parents. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really feel bad for those parents, because at least they're alive. 
<laughs> Holy are not crap! Me. Dang! <laughs> Jeez! Obviously, I'm kidding. They even had the police go through Abby's things, unlike Wendy. Why didn't they go through Wendy's things? Wow, that's, that's a really know. bad investigation. Yeah, this really is What not. the police couldn't understand was why, just like with Wendy, none of her things were missing. It was as if she had just gotten up and walked out. That's what she did. There was no note, no clues, nothing. But Wendy did leave a note, <coughs> so that's different. By the time a month had gone by, the police were ready to give up their search. It's only they, a month this time. Yeah, they don't care. They care even less. And label her as a runaway, despite the evidence against that claim. At least they labeled her as a runaway and not just a runaway. Yeah, good point. Her parents were frantic. As time went on, they felt more and more alone in their search. Search parties and calls with information were occurring less, and police began to brush them off. That is messed up. They were never the best, they police, were never force the best anyway. police force anyway, because nothing really happened in that town. You mean... Uh, you mean, <laughs> <laughs> but there was one other person who was not ready to give up. Tucker began his own little investigation, beginning with asking after her around town. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> after <they> you. <laughs> <laughs> he waits for Abby to ask. He picked a Saturday morning to begin, and by that Saturday afternoon, he had gotten nowhere, so he gave up so less than 12 hours. He did, he did one day. No one had seen her the day she disappeared. No one had even seen her around that time because she barely went anywhere besides school in those last few weeks. Wow. Tucker was wondering what he should do next when he realized something. The day when everything changed was the same day that he had hacked into Wendy's computer. <clears throat> okay. There must have been something important on there that she found after he left. He realized that he would have to go back to her house and find out what it was. So this is just Abby's storyline. So this is chapter. So this is act one again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Instead of driving over to her house, he left his car at his house that's and jogged weird, over to Abby's. That's a weird detail. <laughs> weird. Okay. He didn't he, use his 99 whatever. He, he kept in constant contact with her parents, so he knew that Saturdays were when they both went out to do what they could to find their daughter. And whether it's whether it's well, search well, for her, mm -hmm. hand out flyers, or haunt the police station for any leads. What? I guess Abby's parents are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's dead. Once he got there, he found the extra key hidden in a flower pot to the police station <laughs> and headed up to her room. Glancing at the clock and noting the time, he quickly went to work. Okay. What is happening? Just keep going. <laughs> Instead of searching through Wendy's computer like he had originally planned, he instead logged on to Abby's. Wow. He never told her of this. But he all knew. But he knew. But he knew all of the login information because she wasn't as careful as she should have been while typing it in. He's also an expert you mean, hacker. So you mean you cares? just stared at her hands while she typed the password and memorized it? <laughs> there wasn't much on her computer, but there were tons of searches about the old house in the cornfields. There was like no Google results because that's such a weird thing to Google. Yeah, old house in <coughs> cornfields around <laughs> he, me. <laughs> oh, it looked like she was wondering if you could get internet connection from out there. What? <laughs> Puzzled, Tucker checked through her files, and there he found tons of pictures of the old house. Tucker began to wonder if that's where Wendy and Abby were hiding. But why? He decided he would check it out later. But first, he would check her emails to see if she had been communicating with anyone besides him. You'd think they'd mostly be like <clears throat> You'd think. phone calls. You'd think. But, you know, emails. Upon looking through her emails, he found nothing. Just the dozen or so emails he had sent to her that went unanswered, and some other junk. But just as he was about to close out, he caught sign of her spam Expert folder. Expert hacker. Expert hacker still Expert doesn't care hack. about the spam <laughs> folder. After considering it, he decided that it wouldn't do any harm just to check. All of the messages were from an anonymous sender. He, she was very good at filtering spam other than that. <laughs> okay. That's weird. Who's the sender? He muttered. That was like, um, a, like a guy from Gorillaz. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker decided to choose one at random. This is the message now. <clears throat> uh, it's Jeff voice. You were warned, but you just couldn't help yourself. And now you know too much. Tucker narrowed, or actually, I guess you have to keep saying it for now. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker narrowed his eyes. <laughs> it's really funny. Tucker narrowed his eyes at the screen. Then he clicked on another, more recent one. Jeffrey's coming to get you. <laughs> Jeffrey's coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Abby dear, you'd better not tell! Ugh. Tucker 
clenched his fists. <laughs> clenched. clenched. You mean clenched and turned away from the computer. Jeff. He said. Through, oh, sorry. Jeff. He said through his teeth, voice dripping with venom. 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 <laughs> Turning back to the computer, he clicked on a few more, piecing together most of the emails. Tucker figured Abby had found out something about Jeff. Yeah, like you couldn't figure that out from yeah. the first one. Piecing together most of the emails, Tucker figured Abby had found out something about Jeff. And now, Jeff was coming for her. Uh, yeah, when, like in the email where he said, Jeffrey's coming to get you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder what that means. He also knew in his gut that it had to be something to do with Wendy. Maybe Eric should take over Tucker. Yeah. Oof. You gotta be Tucker. Do you want to, like, read for a little bit? I just, I need a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got you. She better let me dead, you fucker. Tucker muttered as he... <laughs> Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, Tucker fucker! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Tucker muttered as he held his head in his hands. The fresh tears of Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> fresh tears rolled down his cheeks. He didn't want to admit what he already knew was true. I'll find you, Jeff. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made that noise for two minutes. And then it hit him. A simple a knife. <laughs> then it hit him. <laughs> A knife in his back? <laughs> he had rabies or something, I don't know, because of those noises. A simple connection. The common, the common denominator. Hacker speak. <laughs> of course, Jeff had never left. He had been living right under everyone's noses this whole time. He'd been living right under everyone's noses. Tucker looked under his nose, and he was that <laughs> nose. <laughs> well, my guess is that oh. he's just an entity on the dark web. Uh, Tucker clicked out of her email and brought up the window that he had used to search Abby's most recent history. He brought up the most recent search, and there it was. The place where Wendy was found shivering in the darkness. The place that Abby had become assess obsessed with. The place where no one would think to look. J.C. Penney's. The old abandoned <laughs> house in the cornfields. That's where, that's where AKA Jeff was. AKA J.C. Penney. <laughs> so literally, he just figured out now that the old abandoned house is where Jeff was. It took him this long wow. to think to go there. Yeah, Owen Wilson. Also, that's on the screen. That's where Jeff was. That's... That's where Jeff was. <laughs> Tucker didn't stop to think. Pfft, who needs to think? Instead, almost in a trance-like state, he put everything back in order and left the room. When he got home, he wrote a goodbye letter to his parents, oh my God. telling them he, that he, he loved them and that he was leaving to be with Abby. What am I doing? <laughs> he wrote it, knowing that he may never return. Some don't come back when they set off to confront evil. <laughs> Go ahead. You do another paragraph, please. <coughs> Oh boy. Tucker pushed his way through the cornfields. He knew the way to the house, like the back of his hand. Why? <laughs> he shook it away was, the, It was on the back of his hand. He shook away, it was tattooed. He shook away the thoughts that tried to force their way into this, his head of him. Abby. Abby and other neighborhood kids playing out here when they were younger. That was a pretty bad sentence, I'm not gonna lie. No distractions. No distractions. Okay. Mm-hmm. They could still be alive, though the mm -hmm. chance was slim. Either way, he needed to know everything, or else he would never find peace. peace. It wasn't long before he could see the dark house looming before him. Once he had stepped onto the porch, he took a deep breath and reached for the doorknob. Run. Down, on, on, down, on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I Tucker whirled around, but there was nothing there but the cornfields from whence he came. <laughs> whence. That is not the right way to put that in the sentence. That uh, Tucker. Abby! <laughs> <laughs> he said as he was a wolf. <laughs> he whispered. He could have sworn he heard her just now, but that was impossible. It must have been his imagination, or the wind whispering through the fields, <laughs> or that maybe... Wind. It was his subconscious crying out for him to get as far away from this place as he could. And it took on the voice of the person who was always on his mind. So when he said Abby, did he talk to the wind? <laughs> okay. But it was too late. He was here now. And the fear that gripped him and shook him to the bone was not enough to stop him. Once again, he closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and opened the door. The, the smell door of there. death and rot immediately slapped him in the face <laughs> and forced him to take a step back. He closed the door, too. <clears throat> it was so strong that he actually gagged and had to force himself not to throw up. So who's dead? Probably everyone. everyone. Despite the overwhelming smell, good, good observation. he stumbled into the dark house and tried to find his way around. Sorry, I'm hiccuping. 
The house oh. had two stories. Both better than this one. Including a, ba- <laughs> <laughs> including a basement and an attic. He knew that Jeff was most likely on the second floor. That's where all of the bedrooms were. Oh, I'm 